Okay. Let me just scare off the idiots. Hey, look, nail polish. Now we've got that out the way and the morons have clicked away. It's been a little while since I've come up this road. Uh, this is a, a nice road that leads into some really nice twisty mountains. And now that I've finally got a microphone that's not gonna distort at any speed, I'm really looking forward to it. Always remember your chin strap, kids. Okie dokie. So of course, first of all, I want to address the weirdos <laughs> who have been coming onto the channel and commenting about my nail polish. Who cares, mate? Who cares? And the fact that you're coming on here making comments about it says a lot about how fucking insecure you've got to be. I mean, that is weak. That is weak. But your comments feed the algorithm. So if you feel it's necessary to say, oh my God, someone's riding a bike and wearing nail polish. It's the end of the world. By all means, drop a comment. I don't care, it feeds the algorithm. My channel always does better because YouTube doesn't care what you've come along to say. All it cares about is people are engaging. So, what do I care? I'm gonna do what I want regardless of how insecure you feel about yourself. I wear a lot of pink and purple. I have long hair. I wear nail polish. I do that because I want to, because when you get to a certain age, you stop giving a fuck about what other people think. And that's liberating to me. I don't give a fuck what you think. I'll do what I want. I chose to ride a 125 because I didn't feel it necessary to try and get the fastest thing on the market to prove a point. Who cares? Now, we've got that out the way, we can just get on with it and enjoy some scenery and have a nice ride because that's what I came out here to do. I ride a 125 because I like riding and I like the fact that it sips on fuel. I like the fact that when I break something I can learn how to fix it. I mean, that was entirely the point in getting such a simple bike as well. I wanted to learn how to do my own maintenance, and this bike has been fantastic for that. And I, I've said it on my channel hundreds of times, literally hundreds of times. This is not a how-to channel. Don't do what Nick does. My principle has always been from the very beginning of building motorized bikes on the channel. It doesn't matter if I make a mistake and, and, and stuff something up. I am more than happy to show my mistakes as well as the successes. Case in point. Uh, last week I put up a video, what happens when you or it was a clutch adjustment gone wrong. I show what happened when I adjusted my clutch cable too tight. Now, one of the other very few informative CB125F channels out there, Richard Shepard, has gratefully gone and put out a video very recently showing you how to do it properly. Incidentally, he's also got valve clearances, which is a, a common question as well. So I'm going to put that on a card right here. Go and check it out. Absolutely recommend Richard Shepard. Don't do what Nick does. Absolutely do what Richard does. Uh, he's got a lot of informative content that's not going to lead you astray by copying some of the stupid shit that I do. 
I mean, it should be pretty obvious to anyone who's been following the channel for any period of time. My videos are entirely unscripted, and the downside of that, of course, is I can be riding along and entirely forget that there's a camera recording. <coughs> Fuck me. I'm only yawning because I'm not used to talking so much. Now you can start to see the roads are turning into something a bit more fun. What I love about this bike on roads like this, you can really forget the fact that you're only on 10 horsepower. Because this bike is enough to have fun on. You know, a little bike like this is, is not, it's not for adrenaline junkies, I wouldn't say. It's perfect for people like myself who know what they want out of a bike and don't care if it doesn't do 300 kilometers an hour. There's something deeply satisfying about twisting the throttle wide open and not even really having to care. I've made comments before about how absurd it is when people say these stock tyres are rubbish. I think these stock tyres have been absolutely fantastic. And I think part of that is taking the time to learn the machine. I'll say confidently that these tyres have saved me on more than one occasion where I've come into a corner too fast and I've had to brake and they haven't broken traction once. And I've driven in all sorts of conditions. You know, it's, it's not, I'm not just a sunny day rider, I'm an all weather kind of rider. I will ride, it, uh, I've ridden in storm weather before, that wasn't fun, but the fact that I haven't been afraid to ride on gravel, to ride in the wet, means that I've taken the time to understand how the bike behaves in different conditions. And I think if I come into this going, oh, these tires are skinny, they're gonna lose grip. I think that's what, you know, you will manifest that. You learn to trust your tires and you'll have a lot more fun. Yeah, these tires are skinny, but that doesn't mean the bike can't be lent right over. It doesn't mean you can't slam on the brakes. I feel like this bike is almost perfectly balanced for the grip it provides, under the power it provides, and it has just enough braking force for the speeds that it's capable of. I mean, the other week I was doing uh, progressive braking practice and I realized that I had not ever slammed on the brakes at a high speed. So I made a point of slamming on the brakes at a high speed. Because you need to know what the bike's going to do. It's not enough just to, you know, slam on the brakes at 25 k's an hour like they get you to do on the license test. It's all part of understanding the machine that you're in control of. 117 kilos powered by explosions and it's still pretty fucking pathetic. This bike has the, you know, has enough power to be dangerous. All bikes do. I'm at that dangerous part of my riding journey where nothing bad's happened yet. So I really do have to keep myself in check and make sure that I'm not becoming overconfident. And 
and you know I burnt out the clutch early on this bike because I knew that I needed practice so I went out there and I abused the clutch and I burnt it out as a result but a clutch is no less consumable than your brakes or your tires don't be afraid to practice because you might wear it out incidentally it was a cheap and relatively easy job for me to do in the driveway once I'd uh, once I bought the tools I needed I could do it in the morning the longest part about the job honestly was waiting for the oil to drain so next month marks my 12 months of riding and my goal is to get this bike up to 10,000 kilometers uh, by that milestone and we're sitting on 9650 at the moment and I've got no doubts that I'll be able to do that and I'm not really sure if I'm going to do a video to mark the occasion um, at 5,000 kilometers I made sure the bike was recording uh, not the bike I made sure the camera was recording for the moment I clicked over 5,000 and I might do the same for 10 but I've already said just about everything there is to say about this bike so I don't really feel like there's any point doing another review I, I thought about doing the whole is it a good learner bike thing but I, I don't think that's fair of me to comment on because this is the only thing I've ridden in any meaningful capacity I don't really have anything to compare it to you know I have my own thoughts and opinions on whether or not I would recommend this bike to a learner rider in Australia particularly in regional Victoria maybe I'll do that I'll just put up a five minute opinion opinion video I have no idea where this car came from because I was parked on the top of this road and I didn't notice anything coming down the road it must have popped out a driveway or a side street or something which I'm a little annoyed because part of the reason in waiting by the side of the road is to let the traffic open up in front of you because even a 125 can handle a road like this a lot faster than this but sometimes it's nice just to relax a little bit and take things at a slower speed you don't always need to be pushing the limits of your skill and ability I had one commenter ask me why am I always revving the bike so high that's absolutely like a valid question because you don't need to have the bike revving high I mean we're doing 60 k's in fifth but sometimes it's fun to sit in third and do this and instantly catch up to the slow moving buffet in front of you the answer is simple why do you rev the bike so high because it's fun the trouble is is I could slow right down here and put a bit of distance between myself and the car in front but they are traveling at a speed that I would catch up to in a matter of minutes so I would rather just keep going at a nice steady relaxing pace you know, there's plenty of other opportunities for going a bit quick I'm beginning to wish I had a worn a jumper underneath my riding jacket because it is quite cool up here colder than I was expecting as well I'm sure the camera won't show it up for anything other than a slightly darker shade on the road but there appears to have been a little bit of rain last night and there's still patches of road that are still a bit wet and slick and they can be really hard to spot when you've got the shadow of the trees over the road as well 
So I try not to get irritated because normally it's me holding up the traffic, not the traffic holding me up. Um, you know, I try not to get frustrated at not being able to go as fast as the bike possibly can, which is the way I ride this thing 90% of the time because it's a 125 and it doesn't go any faster. Uh, but you have a lot more fun on this bike if you just let it do what it wants to do. It's not a fast bike, and the more you fixate on it not being a fast bike, the less fun you're going to have. And you know what, for once I'm having fun just taking it easy. I mean, as it stands, my nipples are icicles right now, so it's probably not a good thing to be going any faster. The real plus side to taking it easy and not revving the shit out of this bike is my fuel's gonna last even longer. You know, I, I did this video on the fuel economy of this bike and I tracked it over, well, I mean, I've done over 6,000 kilometers on it now, six and a half thousand kilometers. And once I get back on a straight, I'll click it over to fuel average. It's still sitting on 2.9. A lot of the people riding small bikes are coming out going, that's crazy high for a 125. I disagree. The way I punish this bike, having a fuel average of under three litres per 100 k's is, is fantastic. And the fact is, it will never be higher than that. I mean, the instant fuel reading was showing I was using 2.1 litres per 100. You know, that, that's the live running average. Take that figure with a pinch of salt but that's still really really good and you can get phenomenal economy out of this bike if you don't thrash it like I do but I love the fact that I can pin this thing wide open sit on the freeway for hours on end and still average less than what three liters I'm a little bit too cold to head right into the mountains, I'll be honest. Oh. I did want to go deep into the mountains today, but I am just not geared up properly for it. So I think I'll head back to civilization and I'll do the rest of that video another time. The plus side is turning around where I did. I didn't see any traffic coming in the other direction, so it means I have got the freedom to wind the bike up a little bit.